In this video, we're going to look at similar shapes and we're going to look at how to uh, find missing sides of similar shapes. So here we've got two rectangles. This rectangle has got a length of six centimeters and a width of two centimeters. And this rectangle has got a length of 12 centimeters and a width of four centimeters. Um, watch the video on similar and congruent shapes to see more detail on what, are similar, uh, what similar shapes are. But basically, similar shapes is where one shape is an enlargement of another one. So in other words, the sides have all been multiplied or divided by a certain number, but all the angles remain the same. So if we notice, if we look at these two rectangles, these two rectangles are similar. In other words, one is enlargement of the other. Uh, all four angles if they're the same. So it's a right angle, 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 and right angle. Okay, but you'll notice that the sides, if you multiply the lengths by two, you will go from six to 12, and likewise, if you multiply the widths by two, you will go from two to four. So in other words, this shape has been enlarged by scale factor two. So to get from A to B, you would enlarge A by scale factor two to get to B. Okay, let's have a look at a typical question. So here we've got two triangles and they are similar. As you can see, the one on the left is larger than the one on the right, and they are similar to each other. So the first thing to do is to see what the scale factor of enlargement is. Now the base of this one is six centimeters, and the base of this one is two centimeters. So if you times by three, you would get from two to six. That means the scale factor of enlargement is three. So that means to get from five to x, you're gonna times by three as well. And five times three is equal to 15. So X would be 15 centimeters. And to get back, so to get from 12 to Y, we're going to divide by three. And 12 divided by three is equal to four centimeters. And let's just check, four times three would be 12. So because it's been enlarged by a scale factor of three, that means that all the sides in this one are three times larger than all the sides in this one. Two, six, yep. Yeah. 5, 15, yep, yeah. and 4, 12, yeah. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, so this time we have got two rectangles and they are similar. And this one's got a height of 7.5 and this one's got a height of 5. This one's got a width of x and this one's got a width of 2. So the first thing to do is to find the scale factor of enlargement. Now the two previous examples were very easy. I chose 6 and 12. You could clearly see that was scale factor 2. We times by 2. In this one, the base of this one is two, and the base of this one is six, so you can clearly see you are times by three. But this time we have got 7.5 and five. So we need to find what the scale factor of enlargement is. So on this one, if you wanted to get the scale factor of enlargement, you could just do 12 divided by six. So 12 divided by six is equal to two. That means that it's two times larger. On this one, we had six and two, so we do six divided by two, and that equals three. So it means it's three times larger. So if you divide the bigger one by the smaller one, it will show you what the scale factor of enlargement is. So here, we know the bigger side is 7.5. So we're going to do 7.5 divided by five. Now, some people can look at that straight away and see the answer is 1.5 because one five is five, and half of five is 2.5, and add them together would be 7.5. But another way to do it is to use the bus shelter method. So 7.5 divided by five. Five into seven goes once. The decimal points still keep there in line, so put the decimal point there. So five goes into seven once, remainder two, and five goes into 25 five times. So that means that this shape is 1.5 times bigger than this shape. So the scale factor of enlargement to get from here to here, we would multiply by 1.5. So to get from here to here, we're also going to times by 1.5. And 2 times 1.5, so 2 times 1.5, is equal to 3 centimetres. That means the width of this one is 3 centimetres. Okay, let's have a look at some exam questions. So, um, here we have got, the diagram shows a right angle triangle, ABC. And it says PQR, this one, is similar to ABC. And it says the angle CAB is this angle is the same as this angle here, RPQ. Okay, work out the length PR. So we need to work out this length here. Let's call it X. 
Now, first thing you want to do is to find the scale factor of enlargement. So we want to see what you would times 10 by to get to 25. So let's just do 25 divided by 10, the bigger one divided by the smaller one to see what the scale factor of enlargement is, and that would be 2.5. So this triangle is 2.5 times bigger than this triangle. So you get from 10 to, 2 point, uh, 10 to 25, we were times by 2.5. That means we'd also need to times 15 by 2.5 to get x. So we need to do 15 times 2.5. Uh, we can do this in two ways. Remember, you can to multiply decimals, you can multiply so 15 times 2.5. Remember, you ignore the decimal points, you do 15 times 25, and you could use your grid method or column method to work that out. Uh, so 25 times 15. 5 times 5 is 25. Put the 5 down, carry the 2. 5 times 2 is equal to 10, plus 2 is 12. Uh, 10 times 5, so put the 0 down. 1 times 5 is equal to 5, and 1 times one, or one times 2 is equal to 2. And add 125 and 250 together, and you would get 375. But because there's one number after the decimal point in the question, there needs to be one number after the decimal point in the answer, so it would be 37.5. If this was a calculator question, you could just times by 2.5, and get it. Or another quick way to do it would be um, notice that 15 times 2 is 30, and 15 times 0 0.5, that would be the same as half of 15, which is 7.5, and 30 plus 7.5 would be your answer, which was 37.5. Let's have a look at another question. Okay, this time it says calculate the length PQ. So we need to find the length PQ, this one, X. So let's find the scale factor of enlargement. So we need to find what we would times 3.2 by to get to. 4.8. So remember, we divide the bigger one by the smaller one. So 4.8 divided by 3.2. Uh, dividing by decimal is hard, so less times by 10. So we times both of these by 10, we would get 48 divided by 32. And if you do that, you're going to get an answer of 1.5. Okay, again, you could use your bus shelter method if you want to for that. That means the scale factor of enlargement is 1.5. It means this triangle is 1.5 times bigger than this triangle. So 3.2 times 1.5 would give you your 4.8. That means I need to times 4 by 1.5 to get x. So 4 times 1.5. 4 times 15 is equal to 60. So that means that put the decimal point back in, 6.0 or 6. Or well, another way to do it would just be 4 times 1.5 would be 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5, which is 6. So that means that this side is 6. Okay, two more questions to go. Okay, the diagram shows three similar triangles. This one, this one, and this one. So that means that this one is enlargement of this one, and this one is enlargement of both this one and this one. So let's work out the value of x. So let's start off by just looking at these two. To get from two to six, you would have times by three. That means that this triangle is three times bigger than this triangle. So if we wanna go back, we just wanna divide by three. So nine divided by three, is equal to three centimeters. Okay, so let's have a look at part B, work out the value for Y. So we wanna find Y on the bigger triangle here. Um, there's two ways to do it. You could either use this triangle, the nine and the six, or you could use the three and the two. Um, I'm gonna use this triangle on the left, the three and the two, just because it's got easier numbers to deal with. Okay, so to get from two to 15, we need to find the scale factor of enlargement to get from here to here. So let's do 15 divided by two to see the scale factor of enlargement. So the scale factor of enlargement is 7.5. That means that this triangle is 7.5 times bigger than this triangle. So to get from three to y, I need to times by 7.5. So I just need to do three 7.5s. So three times 7.5. Uh, so that would be three times seven, 21. And three times 0.5 is 1.5, so that would be 22.5. So that means that y is equal to 22.5. And our last question. Uh, this time we have got, it looks quite complicated, we've got a triangle and another triangle attached to it. And you can see from these little two lines that this, this angle is the same as this one, and this angle is the same as this one. And it says they're similar. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually just gonna separate the two triangles from each other, okay? So I'm just gonna draw the, this out, but I'm just gonna separate them from each other. So I've got, and this would be a very, poor sketch. I'm not very good at this thing without a runner. So we have got A, B, C, 
and this side was equal to 5 and this side was equal to 6. We've also got the triangle ACD and I'm just going to straighten it up a bit so because it's similar I'm actually going to draw the same shape as this one so that's going to be A C D. Okay so that's just this triangle but I've just sort of separated it out. This side AC was equal to 6 so that's equal to 6 and we're trying to find the length AD. We want to find this length here let's call it X. So to get from this triangle to this triangle, let's see what the scale factor of enlargement is. Now, I've got this side is equal to 5, and this one is equal to 6. So we do the bigger one, 6 divided by the smaller one, 5, and that's equal to 1.2. This is a calculator question. That means that this triangle is 1.2 times bigger than this one. So you get it from 5 to 6, you times by 1.2. So that means to get from 6 to x, you would also times by 1.2. So you just do 6 times 1.2, so 6 times 1.2 is equal to 7.2. So that means that this side is 7.2.